Hello, so thanks for joining everyone. So now we'll be starting our webinar today. So for this webinar, we have Mehdi Hassan with us. He's one of our most prominent engineer who is working on MySQL. And he will be giving a demo today and also there will be a theoretical part. So please stay tuned. And also there will be a question association where you'll be able to ask questions regarding this topic. Mehdi, please start. Thank you, Rakit. Can you hear me and show my uh, and see my screen? Yeah, we're good. Please continue. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining in. I'm Mehdi Hassan, software engineer at F-Squad. Today, our webinar is about deploying resilient MySQL cluster using KubeDB on Kubernetes. So let's dive in. Today, we'll be discussing about what we mean by resilient MySQL cluster, and then we will sh we will show the difficulties we will be facing if we want to maintain mysql cluster in kubernetes manually then we will show show you that what kubedb is offer offering regarding that and then we'll we'll show you the demo of mysql clustering using group application and then we will see the recovering on action and uh, we will do a couple of QBB ops requests and then we'll take backup using stash and we will introduce our newly added feature in a DB cluster. And the end of this, we will have a Q, uh, Q and a session and we'll love to hear from you. So let's dive in. So what we it's mean by a resilient MySQL cluster. Resiliency is the ability of a server, a network, a storage system or an entire data center to recover quickly and continue operating even when there has been an equipment failure or power outage or other disruptions. Uh, a resilient database is one that can automatically or to likely or active failure so that uh, application continue operating with full access to their data as even as failure occurs. So a resilient MySQL cluster has the ability of auto automatic failover. That means it could be uh, recovered from any failover situation. And then it will has the ability of self-healing and it will support the synchronous replication. And uh, it should, should have no single point of failure. And then uh, it should support the geographical replications. So what are the difficulty we are going to face if we want to manually maintain MySQL cluster in Kubernetes. Uh, first of all, we will face the problem in provisioning. That is, we need a lot of knowledge about the Kubernetes concept, that is Kubernetes workloads, like uh, workloads and services and uh, networking and storage, and also the secrets and the uh, uh, role or, or the RBAC. And then uh, we need a lot of knowledge of Helm and we need the knowledge of MySQL uh, server side setup. So that's a lot of work for a developer to uh, just provision a database. And then the most critical, most critical part is that the maintaining, that is, uh, you don't know when, when your server gonna crash and when you are gonna recover it. Uh, upgrading is the thing that we, we don't uh, do that frequently, but uh, up manually upgrading things can be very difficult and challenging. And here, if you want your database to be scalable, then uh, every time is horizontally scaling or vertically scaling is like uh, provisioning again. And then uh, uh, same goes for the volume expansion. And for you, you want to monitor your, your system. So there's a lot of work to here. And then uh, mostly the, you always want to have your backups. So let's see what QDB is offering regarding to this. First of all, the provisioning. Uh, for provisioning using QDB, you just need QDB uh, installed in your Kubernetes cluster. And then you just need to know about the QDB uh, CRD for provisioning your database. Uh, that's only a YAML uh, for provisioning your, your database. We'll see in the demo. Then, then QDB will offer you the scaling solution you you could uh, solution your database you, both horizontally and vertically as you, with your need 
Then we had the support for version, version upgrade. You can upgrade your database in both patch or major versions. And then you will be able to do volume expansion as your need. Then we have the restore backup and restore capability using stash. And kubedb can be secured with PLS. We you can add add rotate update or delete. Uh, delete. Uh, we are ma maintaining this by Chart Manager. And then we have the support for monitoring using Prometheus. So what's new in this release? Uh, in this release, we have introduced uh, uh, InnoDB cluster. Uh, InnoDB cluster comes with its MySQL shell, which basically allow you to connect with the MySQL admin API. We'll see, see that in the demo. And uh, it also comes with the MySQL router, which works as a load balancer. Uh, uh, the cl your client application connect to the MySQL router and it will distribute the request according to the uh, read or uh, read or write access. Uh, then then it comes with the MySQL server. Uh, it uses the uh, same MySQL server and the same proof replication technology behind it. So so before the demo part, uh, if you want to get the license, uh, you can get the license at licenseissuer.expo.com. And for the documentation, you can visit our well-documented site that is uh, kubedb.com slash docs. And for the installation purpose, it's very simple. You just do need this uh, uh, help command. So, and the documentation is always there. So let's dive in the demo. Uh, before the demo, I want to uh, I want to introduce with my workspace. So I what I have there is kubedb enterprise operator and community operator installed there. I have also stash installed for the doing the backup. Uh, here I am watching the MySQL object. Then I watching the the MySQL ops request there, and this section are for the backup. So we'll see when we are doing the backup. So. Yeah, we are talking about this CRD. This is the gives it your MySQL object. So here we are telling telling KubeDB that it's the MySQL object. We are defining its name and namespace. Uh, that will be the name of the instance, and that will be the namespace. Uh, in the spec section, we are defining the version that is 5.7.36. Uh, actually, KubeDB maintain its own version CRD. So if we look at the version CRD, we can see that a lot of image there. I'm, I will explain you. Uh, this is the image for our coordinator we are, uh, we are using. So basically what it does, it, it's coordinate between the servers to join them as a group application or the, in the InnoDB cluster. And then you can see that we are using the MySQL official image for our database image and then uh, this section is for the exporter image, and uh, this is for our init container. Uh, we do the initial all the initialization part from it, and then uh, this section is for the stash to take backup from MySQL. Okay, so in the replicas, we are uh, defining it as three. That is, we want uh, three replicas, uh, three replica server, and then in the topology. Uh, we are defining that is as a group replication. So the cluster will be joined as a group replication. And then uh, we, uh, in the storage section, we have just said that we want a durable storage of storage cluster standard. And we have just uh, asked for one GB storage. And then uh, it's a termination policy is set to web out. Termination policy is uh, we define and the defined field that is uh, that means that uh, if uh, if the termination policy is safe to whip out then uh, if we delete the mysql object then all the object created associated to mysql that all will be deleted and we have another termination policy that is do not terminate uh, that will help you to prevent the accidental deletion of your kubdb object so for provisioning, we just need to apply these uh, OMLs. So I have um, I have this OML here. So let's apply it. 
So you can see that it's that simple to provision a database using uh, a cluster database using MySQL. So what we can see that uh, this is my MySQL object is currently in the provisioning phase. My uh, two instances already come. It will try, now try to join into the into the group. Now we want to see a high level of high level architecture how QDB is uh, managing things. So as a as a user, I have created MySQL CRD. Then this CRD is watched by KubeDB operator. And now KubeDB will create the things associated to it. Uh, it will create a service account, a service. The, the, in that, the data, database instance will be ex export outside of, of the cluster. And then it has its own role-based access control. It's creating the cluster role and cluster role binding. And then it will create the stateful set with MySQL, MySQL server, uh, server container in it. And then uh, we will have a pod disruption budget. That means um, it will define the maximum unavailable pods for a voluntary dis disruption. And then we will create a service monitor that will help you to monitor things. And lastly, it's the app binding that will allow another application to connect with your KubeDB instances. So let's see what the status there. Okay, so we can see that my MySQL is ready in the ready state. So let's exit into it. So now we can see that each of the instance has joined in the, in the cluster. So now what we want to do, we want to do yeah, insert some data in it. So let's uh, create a database. We're creating a table, my guess then we'll be inserting some values in it so we can we can select select that so you can see that i have inserted three data so now today we are talking about the resiliency so how kubedb make it kubedb manage my cluster being re resilient so let's see also see that in action so basically, sometimes that can, things can happen. Your server may be killed by out of memory. Uh, oh, your server may be killed by OOM, or uh, your one of the server can have the network uh, network failure, or the uh, or the power failure, or your your whole whole cluster has had been the fail had failed. So let's see. You suppose your cluster has been uh, failed by uh, your MySQL server has been killed by a out of memory exception. So uh, to generate this, I just want to shut down this. So my my MySQL still would be in the critical scale. And if you I try to join, I, I couldn't be joined. So now it's in the critical stage. Uh, soon KubeDB will recover this from this state to into the ready state, we will be able to join in the cluster again. So here is, here is it, and we can uh, validate our our application. Yeah, if server uh, is online, okay? So one thing that can happen, one of the scenario is that my uh, one, one instance could have fail or it could have a power failure or something like that. So we want to do that also. So I just want to delete the pod. So I have deleted the first pod there. Now we want to see that KubeDB can recover from it or not.
uh, another thing is that we want to validate our group application is working so we want to see our data is in the uh, replicated server so you can see that uh, our database is in the re replicated server also so uh, we can validate our data too so you can see that we have fully replicated the data also and we can see that my replication has also been uh, sorry uh, my cluster also in been the ready state so my school zero has been successfully joined in the cluster uh, another scenario uh, kubedb supports the failure of uh, single instance and multiple instance instances. It also uh, can recover from the whole cluster failover. So we want to see that in action too. So I want to delete every pod associated with MySQL server. So now I am deleting these three pods to generate a cluster, a whole cluster failover. So let's wait for the pod to terminate and rejoin in the cluster again. So now I can see that my instance are coming back and it will take some time to again uh, back into the cluster. Uh, it didn't up yet. Uh, let's wait for some time. Okay, so I can log in here. So uh, I can see that two server has already joined. Uh, let's for the another one to join. So now I can see that uh, all the replica has joined in the cluster and, um, and my school server is ready. And for my school uh, pipe version, you can see the primary here. Uh, we, can, we can select this by this query. So my, 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 this pod is the primary right now. So this was the failover scenario and the resiliency of this MySQL cluster. And now we just, we want to do, perform a upgrading host request to this MySQL server. Since we are using the MySQL 5 version, we want to go to the MySQL 8 version. So let's see uh, how kubedb manage this. So these things are managed by kubedb enterprise operator. So basically, this is the MySQL of request CRD. So in here, we are in the metadata section, we are just giving it a name that, uh, and in the namespace we are specifying. And um, for the OS request to be work, uh, you will have to be the same namespace on, the, on your database. And in the spec section, we are referring to the database name MySQL. So, we are referring to this database and then we have the obstacles type is upgrade, upgrade and we want to upgrade its target version 8.0.07 so let's apply the crd so this was, was my upgrading ml uh, same as the flight. So what kubedb will do is um, upgrade each server one by one. Let's see a high level overview of this, how this 
manage. So basically now our cluster in that step, we have just created a MySQL object, like if the operator has just successfully provisioned it, provisioned it. And now we have created a MySQL ops request type upgrade. So our QDB enterprise operator will watch this and it will refer to the MySQL object. Then, then it will pause our community operator to do any operation. The QDB enterprise operator will now send the update request to the stateful set. It will update the image of the stateful set and then it will update the actual image in the MySQL and when the MySQL server is updated, we will, the auto request will be successful and we will resume the community operator. So let's see what happened there. Uh, we can see that this first, uh, first MySQL server is uh, coming into the on, online section. Uh, so let's validate that. Uh, oh, sorry, I just log in in the phone server. So we can see that my, our MySQL 1 instance has already been updated to the latest version of MySQL that is 8.0.27. So now we can also validate our data. Uh, we can see that our database hello there. We can also see our data also persists. So we have the same three data in it. So I can see that MySQL 2 is now trying to upgrade. So let's wait for this to have completed. Uh, and another thing regarding to MySQL version, we can get it from there. So this is the MySQL version we are supporting in the latest release. And we can, we can see things related to this version. So, here we can see that uh, we are using the official MySQL image for this. And then uh, our co coordinator image is same and uh, init container for MySQL 8 and then the slash add-on for this. So we can see that um, my two server has already joined and the third, third one is trying to join. So let's wait for the third one to complete. So now I can see that my three, all of three instances has joined in the cluster and my database status is ready and the type of the OS request is successful. Uh, that's all about the upgrade. Now uh, we do upgrade the thing without taking backup, but that was a risky task for us. Now we'll be uh, taking the backup things using Stash, Stash, uh, Stash is a backup tool provided by F-Code. So 
uh, we'll be we'll be taking our database backup using stash so before that uh, uh, for stash we need a repository to uh, take backup this is the uh, gps repo where we are going to store our data and And this is the stash effect CRD for the repository. Uh, we just we just have to name it, and uh, we have to uh, uh, we we in the backend section we are referring to the Google Cloud that is, and the bucket name is MySQL Backup Test Zero, and we want to store our data in this path. And for this, we need to maintain a GCS secret, which I have already created. And, and in the backup section, uh, for the backup configuration, uh, to, to make backup, we maintain uh, another CLD that is backup configuration. Uh, in the metadata, we are naming it. And in the schedule section, we are telling that uh, we want to do backup every five minutes. And in the task, uh, we are referring to the specific uh, specified image uh, regarding to this that will do, complete the task. And in the repository, we are maintaining this GCS repo. And in the target section, we are referring to the app binding that's name is uh, MySQL. We'll see that in action. And then in the retain policy, we are telling Stash that uh, keep the last five backup you have taken. So let's start making the backup. So I have already created the secret. So you can see that uh, my this is secret here. Now I want to apply this repository ML. So that will refer to the Google Google Cloud. So let's apply it. Uh, here we can see that my repository has been initialized. Now we want to apply the back backup configuration. So what we are telling, we are referring to this MySQL object. Uh, this MySQL object is using the app binding. So we can see here is a app binding name MySQL there. Uh, and so let's figure out the backup first. So we we have applied our backup configuration that will take backup every five five minutes. Uh, that's too late for us. Let's trigger it manually. I can trigger it by creating a backup session. So now you can see that my backup has been started and a backup job has been created for this. So let's wait for the backup to complete. So I can see that my backup is successfully completed. So let's check in the details. So I can see the in the demo MySQL folder, uh, the data in it. These are the stash related data, and this was the snapshot taken from the database. So for further operation, I want to pause this backup. Uh, why we are pausing it? That is, if I want to do some restore, we I just don't want to uh, take another backup. So because we from restoring, we are 
we are taking the latest snapshot to restore. So I'm just pausing it. So now I want to I want to restore this database uh, in a different database. You can restore in, in the in the same database, but I for for this demo purpose, I want to uh, take back up in a different database. Uh, I'm I'm calling this restore MySQL. This is uh, MySQL 8.0.27 version. So let's apply it. So let's wait for wait for it to be provisioning, and we 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 didn't know need this further. So I want to delete this. So let's wait for these two terminate and these two provision. Uh, while it's provisioning, uh, we just want to see the restore YAML from Stash. So this is the restore CRD from Stash. Uh, we are calling it a restore session. We are naming it like a MySQL restore and in the demo namespace. And in the spec section, we are referring to the same repository, this is repository that we will do the restore from and in the target we are referring to the app binding so that it can connect to that mysql database and in the rules section we are taking we are telling stash that we want the latest snapshot so i think my database is in the ready set now and let's validate what's in it So you can see that uh, it's a, uh, it's the only the default database in it. So now we want to uh, restore our backup data in this in this database. So so this is this is our restore YAML we have seen in this in the slide. So let's apply it. So now we can see that our restore job has been created. Uh, we can we can see that our restore is running here, and my QDB phase is the in the data restoring state. So let's wait for the data restore to be completed, and now we want to see the app binding. Uh, so what I can see that my uh, restore has been succeeded and database is in the ready steps. Let's validate the data first.
So we can see the database, database hello appears in it. So let's validate the data too. So now I can see that the three data have uh, taken the backup. So I can test it successfully using stash. Uh, we want to talk about the app binding. Let's see the app binding. So in the app binding, what we are providing is that uh, the the thing is we need to connect with my, the uh, kubedb provide mysql instances and in the secret uh, we are referring to the uh, secret that we need to connect with this database so that's all from the uh, backup session backup and now we will be we will be so we will be show you that the our newly introduced InnoDB cluster in action so for InnoDB cluster, this is our MySQL CRD. So it's basically same as uh, same as before. We have some changes in the topology section. So uh, and in the version we are using the uh, using a different version for the InnoDB. This is eight point zero point two seven, and we are telling that we have we want three replica. And in the topology section, we are defining it as InnoDB cluster mode and InnoDB cluster, since it's come with its router, we are defining the router replica. And th this section are similar to this and the termination policies with a web out for this too. So I want to move into the different, different workspace, workspace. Let's, let's apply the InnoDB ML. So, we can see that our InnoDB instance are coming and it will join into the InnoDB cluster. And since we no longer need this, let's select this. And we can see the high level overview again, what's going on. I have created a MySQL CRD that is watched by my kubedb operator. And then, then kubedb operator will create the service account, the service the InnoDB will be exposed into, and then the RBAC and stateful set. And for InnoDB, it will create a router that will automatically load balance for the server and then the port disruption budget service monitor and let's see the app binding so let's see the status of you know in uh, let's wait for it to provision Uh, we have earlier we have uh, we have talking about the MySQL shell which is provided provided by InnoDB. We will see that in action right now. So we can see here the MySQL shell. Yeah, yeah. I'm is right in the. JavaScript mode, you can be on the Python mode and you have the access of the SQL mode too. So let's back into the JavaScript mode. So in uh, from this, we can access the MySQL admin API. Now I want to get the cluster. So that is dba.get cluster. So I have received the MySQL cluster object. 
then I can see the status of the cluster. So here I can see that my InnoDB zero has joined as primary, InnoDB one as secondary, and InnoDB two as secondary also. And my database is successfully provisioned, and my my router also created. So I I can also list the router. So I can see the router here. So let's insert some data into our MySQL cluster. We're again creating a database name, hello. Insert some data in it. Can we look at it? Um, let's go to the SQL mode. Uh, sorry, you can also use the MySQL shell here. Uh, I'm sorry. And the database table is not created. Let's create it again. Now I can see my table there. Let's insert some data on it. Now I can see that I have inserted this data on it. So today we are, we are take, uh, talking about the resiliency and our InnoDB in, in cluster also support the recovering feature of using KubeDB. Uh, like uh, we can generate the scenario again and just shut down this, just by shut down this server. So now if I can, if I try to join this server, I will not be able. And then my InnoDB instance will be into the critical step. Okay. Uh, let's wait for it to be recovered. It will recover soon. Yeah. So now I can log in. So for InnoDB, we have the single instance failover, multiple instance failover, and uh, recover from a com com complete address. And uh, we want to do a uh, host request that is horizontal scaling. Uh, in your cluster, you sometimes need to be you scale your database record uh, to maintain your uh, read compatibility. So we just can do this by MySQL host request scale up uh, type horizontal scaling. So this is the my school of request CRD for horizontal scaling. We are referring is that uh, we are referring to the same database is named InnoDB, and we want to scale up up to the five uh, five members. So let's apply it. So I can see that my instance has been coming. So let's see that in action in the high level. So my database currently in that state, I have created it. My community operator has successfully provisioned it. And I just applied a QBB MySQL ops request. So now my enterprise operator will watch this and refer to the uh, specific uh, respective database. and. 
it will pause the community operator to do not do anything and it will send the update update request and it will configure to the desired replicated state and it will update the replica and mysql object will be updated when the ops request will be successfully completed we will be resuming our com community operator so now i can see that my what three and four has come so it takes about three or four minutes to come so let's continue proceed with the further so for uh, we have some upcoming features let's discuss about that now we have the support for mysql cluster uh, and the uh, standalone instance we want to introduce a new thing that is mysql read only replica uh, you will be able to do uh, the read only replica on both uh, group application and in the inodb cluster and you, you will be able to perform your analytic like stuff in the MySQL read only replica. And another feature is that we are going to support the, we are maintaining a project that is schema manager. We will be going to support the multi tenant database. So, what we can see is that it's still coming. Let's validate that. So we can see that my third instance has successfully joined. So let's log into the third instance. I can log in using the domain. Yeah. Let's validate the it has the data in it. So I can see that it has the data in it. So I can see my table set. Yeah, so I can see my data also has been replicated to the MySQL third server. And let's check this data set again. So now I can see that my secondary instance also joined and my database state is in the ready state. So that's all from my side today. And now we are in the question and answer section. So I would love, love, like to love to hear from you guys. Uh, thank you. So hey everyone, this is uh, Tamal from Apps Code. Uh, so thanks, uh, Mary, for your presentation. Uh, we have a few questions in the Zoom chat, so I'm going to go read those and uh, try to answer them. So we have a question from Eli. Uh, what is the difference between running normal MySQL cluster and InnoDB cluster? Because uh, InnoDB is default for the latest MySQL versions. So uh, so. Here, I think the naming is a little confusing actually by the official MySQL. So as far as the storage engine goes, uh, the existing uh, clustering support that we had, which was with group replication and the new support that we added, which is called InnoDB cluster by MySQL, both are using uh, InnoDB storage engine um, at the engine storage engine layer. 
I think the primary difference between those two modes is that even at the communication or the clustering, uh, you know, sort of the technology that they are using, they are both using the same group replication. In a way, you can think about that originally MySQL, when they added the clustering uh, infrastructure, uh, the group replication method, which is based on Paxos uh, based, you know, um, membership. Uh, it, it was kind of done as a like a raw, like you can think of group replication kind of as like the raw implementation of it. But then with the InnoDB uh, cluster mode, what they did, they also added the MySQL router component. So the primary uh, benefit of having the MySQL router is that when you are connected to this group replication uh, cluster, if, you know, the you know, the ultimate client gets connected to one of the uh, group members. If that group member goes away, uh, before you had to kind of switch the connection from the MySQL client side. Like, you know, if your application is connected as a client, then it had to switch sort of which instance is going to go. Now that router instance is going to do that for you automatically. So, so if you are connected to the MySQL router instance and the router instance keeps track, which one is the current master, if the master failover happens, it will automatically switch the right operation to that new master. So, so in a way, if you have used something like a proxy SQL before for this kind of functionality, now you, are, you will be able to when even the master switching happens, at least from the client perspective, there, uh, you know, the client, uh, the switching operation will happen sort of uh, transparently. So I think that's kind of the main uh, major difference with the InnoDB cluster mode. So, and uh, in terms of uh, the, you know, how the clustering is managed. Uh, so in the InnoDB cluster mode, as you probably already saw, uh, so we originally obviously had the, the just the standard MySQL shell, uh, but in the InnoDB cluster mode, now they also have this MySQL uh, SH Shell is like a based on uh, JavaScript, Node.js, and it's kind of their new shell. And it has a bunch of additional like a functionality uh, which uh, can help, uh, uh, you know, if you are like a doing kind of shell level operations because it has a bunch of additional, uh, I think it's called like a framework. Basically they have additional functions that's kind of pre-built. Uh, so, so that's, uh, and, and uh, if you look at the documentation of MySQL or I mean, we, we talk to them on their Slack, uh, generally, they recommend when you are trying to create a group replicated cluster using InnoDB storage engine, uh, their general recommendation is to use the new InnoDB cluster mode. Uh, so, so that's why we uh, went ahead and kind of added this uh, operation, or this mode of uh, clustering support. Uh, now there's the question about uh, whether uh, uh, QDB support multi right environment. I, I guess that means multi master. So uh, today uh, by default, we only do a uh, single master. Uh, but if you look at actual EML of uh, we have for those group application, we already have that sort of a field or sort of the, you know, enumeration type field with like a two possible values. Right now we just only support single master. Uh, we can add support for multi-master uh, fairly easily. It's kind of, uh, I mean, like, you know, we just uh, we just haven't turned on that feature. So we, we, we can turn that on for sure. Um, uh, what version of five or eight or InnoDB would you say most resilient eight? Uh, I think uh, the main, uh, I think uh, so. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, hey, hey David. So we 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 did a bunch of research. I think actually uh, in the context of working with David's team, uh, I think that the main thing we found with uh, uh, in terms of resiliency is like uh, what happens when your instance is under memory pressure in MySQL. Uh, so the main thing that is missing uh, in MySQL five is that uh, at the group rep the group replication, there is a group replication cache, uh, which in MySQL 5, you cannot set a maximum memory limit. So what happens, at least in our experiment, is that uh, over time, you know, uh, it, it can keep going up. And if you're running like a relatively, you know, small MySQL instance, like, you know, let's say you set like a, maybe a one GB or two GB of RAM to the MySQL instance uh, or node, uh, or I guess in our case, the pod, uh, if you are running it for a long time and you skip writing a lot of data, 
it, it, basically the cash keeps growing and eventually because there is no way to set an upper limit a, a whole you know the kubernetes memory om killer auto memory killer will eventually kill it because it the memory you know limit crosses uh, with mysql 8 uh, that uh, operation can be set to a maximum number uh, uh, you know in this release we have went ahead and kind of uh, set that to a, a reasonable number for like a few different sizes. So like if what happens below one GB, what happens up to, I believe uh, four GB and then what happens above four GB. So, uh, so, so yeah, so, so with the MySQL 8, uh, at least, you know, what the, the testing we did, uh, at least uh, the default values that are set by the KubeDB operator itself should protect you from, uh, you know, the sort of the out of memory issues that we saw in the previous release of KubeDB deployed uh, MySQL instances. Um, so one thing to be clear is that this was a problem with the default configuration that was set up by uh, KubeDB operator. But if you had went ahead and basically, you know, edited the MySQL CNF file or passed uh, parameters via the args in the uh, KubeDB MySQL YAML, you could override those default settings so you could work around that problem. But uh, now the, you know, but obviously that's not, uh, you know, I mean, we don't want users to be able to think about all these things in, unless you really want to. So we went ahead and fixed that, uh, that default uh, configuration here. Uh, so, yeah, so 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 you know, DB uh, eight is is the uh, you know uh, the resilient version. So uh, now, from our test, uh, what are the possible things that could go wrong when using ops request to upgrade MySQL in KubeDB? So I mean, in our test. Uh, you know, uh, so it really depends, uh, you know, uh, from what version to what version are you going? So, so there, there has actually has been quite a bit of uh, work done in this space, uh, including how we did it before. I actually, I would say we kind of got a little smarter this time around uh, uh, in terms of how we did the uh, upgrade. So, uh, uh, so this, this applies to this uh, specific new version. So uh, before, uh, when you are doing a patch version upgrade, like let's say you are going from age 0, 17 to age 0, 21, something like that, or maybe 5725 to 5729 or 35 or 36, uh, what we would do will uh, basically kind of take one of those uh, non master pods, one of the standby pods, kind of change the Docker image of that, restart it, may connect it back into the group, check that all the data is there. And then, you know, just to keep going kind of in a rolling update fashion. Uh, so that was for uh, the uh, patch upgrades. So the patch upgrades even today work like the same way. Uh, but the, before the, the, but last, uh, you know, in the previous implementation, like in the, up to the 9030 release, uh, one of the problem was uh, that uh, when you did a major upgrade, like you were going from MySQL 5, 7 to uh, MySQL 8, uh, what we had did was basically we, we created like a new blank pod, actually create a new stateful set and then try to copy that data. And, 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 and you know, if you had a lot of data and trying to upgrade, sometimes you might have a failure because data copy was, you know, taking time and all that. So, so those issues has been addressed now. So uh, if you are going from, let's say, uh, five, seven, uh, uh, in, you know, 36 to let's say eight, uh, eight zero, I mean, the latest version that we support now, eight zero twenty-seven, 27, uh, the clone plugins work. So you will be able to just uh, go to the new version. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, frankly, even the underlying MySQL, they have also fixed various things. So. So at least we don't do a full that kind of uh, delete and uh, pod delete and restart. So it's it's done uh, one pod at a time. Uh, so like the patch version uh, with one caveat here, which is if you are coming from MySQL 8.0.3, which was a non GA version of MySQL uh, server, uh, we still have to delete the pod, uh, basically delete the PVC and then create a blank PVC and do all the restart operations. So, 
So if you are uh, going coming from 803, I think this is actually an improvement because before when you are, if you are in 803, there are, the ops request will not allow you to upgrade because uh, because uh, because it, it, it wasn't working uh, the upgrade operation to a non GA to GA. So basically before the recommendation was, you know, shut down the database, take a backup. So I take a backup, shut down the database, kind of start a fresh database that you couldn't do this kind of online uh, um, sort of upgrade operation using ops request. But now uh, with this release, the one 11.24, like, you know, uh, release, uh, if you have 803 database, we know that a bunch of our users do have this 8.0.3, which was the non-GA version of MySQL 8. You will be able to go to first 8.0.17 because of TLS support issues. Basically, uh, in that version, they had the right, like the TLS v1 and v2 support. So you need to, you know, have TLS support for group replication. Uh, so you go to 8017 and then you can from there, you can you know, also upgrade to 8027. I think the main benefit of uh, uh, you know, 8017 versus 8027 is that in the 8027, you have that clone plugin. So you, if, you know, if you have more than like a hundred megabyte of data, it would help uh, when you, you know, uh, like if you do horizontal scaling, you add a new replica, it will be helpful because it will be able to copy the data using that clone plugin. So it is much faster than just using the standard uh, copy operation. So, so yeah, so I think uh, uh, this, uh, uh, so, so this is sort of the, you know, kind of a detailed answer. So, uh, you know, um, so with the new release, I think the only thing, if you have 803 and a standalone cluster, uh, then uh, you still have to uh, basically take a backup and restore it because because since we have to delete the pod, you know, if you just have a single standalone instance, uh, if you delete the PVC, then we kind of lose the data. So that's why uh, actually our ops request will not kind of fail if you try to upgrade a standalone MySQL uh, uh, to kind of using the operator automatically because basically it will give you a validation error. So you have to take a backup Shall shut it down, create a new one with a single pod, which I guess uh, is the best we can do automatically and probably okay, assuming, you know, since you are running a single pod, I mean, I, I assume you kind of expect a little bit of downtime when this kind of operation needs to be done. So, uh, so that's kind of a real answer. Uh, so David has a question here. Uh, so uh, our developers say they want a button to run restore. So I know that we need to pause and then uh, run restore. What would be a restore button look like? Would it be possible using something external or do you be answer to that? Uh, yes. Uh, so when you are talking about pause, uh, I suppose, uh, you do, uh, 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 yeah, pause, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stop writing and jump in and stuff. But yeah, our, our developers um, said that uh, we want a button to restore. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I was just, I just wanted to like, yeah, pick your brain. Like, what, how would that look like? And would it even be possible? Would we need to use something external or yeah? So it's just a open okay. question. Okay, sure. So uh, you can restore today. So if you create a restore session uh, when the database is running it will actually go ahead and restore uh, from the backup into a running instance. So if it is just that, uh, that's the purpose, then you will be able to restore into a running instance using a restore operation today. Uh, it's, it's not a button in that, like there's not a, you know, UI is something that you can go and do the restore today. Uh, that is something we have been actively working on. I uh, hope to show you next year. Uh, early next year, wow. basically. Uh, but but in the meantime, you can use the YAMLs uh, to the restore session YAML from the stash product to restore the database to a old version uh, to an old snapshot. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my pleasure. So, and then uh, I have another question here, Eli. Can you uh, can the ops request also support a downgrade? Just thinking out loud in case we need to roll back in a disastrous upgrade. Uh, 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 I mean, if you so technically, MySQL doesn't allow, you know recommend downgrades. Uh, but if you are within a sort of the same uh, sort of you know uh, major version, sorry, major and minor, 
Well, basically, if you're just doing a patch downgrade, uh, it typically it should work. Uh, yeah, so so yeah, it should work. But I, I believe today, uh, I think maybe I, uh, with the with the new release, uh, you know, we only support like one version. So you know, so this is kind of something. I, actually, we're going to write out a, a kind of a yeah, release note. Uh, you should see it maybe in the next day or so. Uh, kind of detailed out some of the sort of the changes or things that happened, uh, you know. So, uh, uh, so right now there is only one MySQL uh, like for five. We only have support for five, seven, thirty-six. So if if you have you know the older versions of five, you kind of have to do a uh, kind of an upgrade to get to this one. Um, so yeah, so you know you can you can use so by default the ops request will not allow you to downgrade. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but you can basically edit the uh, ops request yourself. You know, there's a, like, you see, there's a, like a upgrade constraint section where you kind of have a, uh, basically a similar constraint written down so that it's, you cannot usually by downgrade, but you can change it to uh, downgrade it within a patch version. It usually works fine uh, in our experiment, uh, in experience. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of uh, all the questions we had uh, in the Slack. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I, I guess we are already already ten minutes uh, uh, over time, so so thank you everyone uh, for joining. And and you know if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us through our uh, sort of support channels, or uh, on Twitter, uh, or you know um, on Slacks, Discords, uh, you know email, uh, whatnot. So thank you everyone for asking your questions and joining us. Uh, I guess we'll see. So we'll have another webinar. Uh, around uh, mid-December, which is kind of, we are planning to do a kind of a roadmap type webinar where we're going to talk about what we're looking to do sort of a, for, our, for our various products uh, in the next year. Actually, before that, you should receive an email from us asking, kind of doing like a very short survey just to kind of collect your feedback to see what you expect to see uh, from our different products in terms of, uh, you know, feature set and improvements in the coming year. So we are hoping to do that kind of survey uh, every six months, so just to kind of collect your feedback, and then and, and then we'll have kind of a roadmap type webinar, so where we'll sort of kind of share uh, what we are looking to do based on all the feedback that we get. So that we so we look we should you should see that uh, survey sent out to you uh, first week of December, and then do our web roadmap webinar in mid uh, December, and that will be the last one for the year, and then we should see everyone again in the new year. So, so thank you everyone and uh, hope to talk to you soon again. And uh, thanks Mary, bye.